I believe we have everybody else on the committee and I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, what I think we'll do is this, is that if we could just go through, um, I'm going to say the following. Uh, it's just, to, again, just to be correct. Scott Golder is our treasurer. He is on the committee. Linda Torres is the uh, assistant town administrator, HR director. She is on the committee. Nathan represents our cable company and he is recording this because we are subject to the open meeting law. Paula Bunker is an elected board member of the Board of Assessors, representing the assessors. Dylan Craig and I've never met before, but Dylan, welcome aboard. Thank you for being here. A resident in town at large appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Rich Hartline uh, represents the developer. Fox represents, she is the chairwoman of the finance committee, represents FinCom. Annie, uh, I'm sorry, Chris Ainatelli, it says Annie. Uh, Chris, the DPW director, uh, obviously he has jurisdiction over the roads. That's why we asked him to be on here. Before, I believe we will see from McMahon. Um, yep. And, um, and so, uh, again, McMahon uh, did the traffic study from Rich. Some of you may have seen that came in earlier from Rich today. Um, are two people at this point. One is Denise Ray's chairwoman of the Board of Selectmen. I anticipate in the future she will be present, but she couldn't be present today. She had a last minute thing happen at work. And Hugh Hurley, he is the chairman of the uh, um, planning board. The board of selectmen appointed him because if and when we need to get permitting, there are two boards in town that will be instrumental in that. One is the planning board, uh, Hugh Hurley. I wanna make sure we had his input uh, during this process. And sitting with me, is Bill Lucini. I don't know if anyone can see him or not. There he is. He is that sharp looking guy. Yeah. Um, and, um, and Bill is the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals. And so therefore, I want to make sure we had his input as well. Any questions about what we just went over? Um, with that said, the first thing that we do have to do is that we do have to organize this committee. There are three positions I'm going to be looking for. One is going to be chair two is vice chair three is going to be clerk it's okay with everybody i do need a motion but i would ask since my office is going to be spearheading this and certainly be doing any work behind the scenes is i think it makes more sense for me to chair it denise agreed but I would, if anybody has any objections let me know uh if not i will look for a motion to uh nominate me as chairperson of this committee no objections mm -hmm. All right, nope. somebody can make a motion, please. That Dave Gagney is uh, be appointed as chair of the pilot committee. Second. I second it. Okay. Any, um, hold on one second. Okay. Any so discussion? I'm sorry, who seconded it? Uh, I did. Okay. Chris. 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 Any discussion on the matter? Seeing none, I'll move to the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, uh, um, I will vote it aye as well. Uh, just for purposes, I just have to let you know, we're, so everything is supposed to be done um, by roll call. I, so uh, let me do it again. I will call off your name and if you could please. Yes, just vote. I sent you an email. Golder? Aye. Aye. Uh, Bunker? Yes. Hold on one second. Torres? Uh, Cragen? Yes. Yes. Lucini yes. and myself. All right, so it carries an yeah. In case I can't make a meeting, um, I'm going to need a vice chair. Um, so I sent it to the Comcast one. Put you on mute while you're on the phone. Thank you. Um, I'll need a vice chair. Um, if I can't make it, um, I will have Linda run it if that's acceptable. Is there any objections to that? No. No. None for me. All right, so I'm going to make I'm going to make a motion to have Linda Torres as vice chair. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Yeah. Paula Buck is seconded. Uh, any discussion on the matter? Seeing none, we'll move for the vote. Golder. Yes. Yes. Bunker, Reagan. Yes. Fox. Yes. Italy. Yes. Lucini. Yes. Gagney. Yes. Torres. Yes. All right, that's unanimous. And the last one is going to be a clerk. I just need someone that when the minutes get done, 
somebody has to sign it. I meant to reach out to somebody earlier and talk to them. I didn't have a chance. Is there anybody that's willing to sign the minutes if need be? Well, they'll need to be. It's that's the law. If I need someone that can sign the minutes, I'll do it. Bunker. Thank you, Paula. And to appoint Paula as the clerk. Is there a second? Second. Um, I'm sorry. Who was that? Chris. Chris. Okay. Thank you. Um, any discussion on the matter? Seeing none, I'll move to the vote. Golder. Yes. Bunker. Craven. Yes. Boss. Yes. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Lucini. Yes. Gagne. Yes. Torres. Yes. Oh, she sounds a lot like me. Okay, good. So the vote for all unanimous. I'm sorry that we had to do that, but we had to do that for um, to get this meeting started. With that said, I think almost everyone here I have talked to on the side. We all know what we're doing here and what the purpose is. I want to make sure these meetings are going to be limited to one hour. Um, and if we will have as many meetings as we possibly need to, but we'll um, we'll limit it to one hour. At this point, there are really two things that, in my opinion, the pilot committee has to be concerned about. One is uh, we'll have to negotiate a pilot agreement with the developer as to what the terms of the financial portion of that pilot will be. To front the money up for the project, and he's going to be looking for reimbursement through the taxation process. The second thing is we have to know what we're getting for our money. For example, what is the project going to be? And I know from speaking to Rich, and I get this because we've all we're all old hats at this at this point, is that he's worried about scope creep the deal as to what our scope of service is going to be. So if there's any objections, please let me know. But I think what I'd like to do, and what I would like to do is I think the primary focus over the next 40 minutes is let's talk about what the pro what Rich's proposal is what he will be proposing for the for, um, for work understand um i do not see us talking about numbers today again rich if you want to talk about what you think things are going to cost that's fine but i think it's premature to start talking hi you welcome aboard um i think it would be premature for us to start talking and negotiating numbers at this point till we know what we're getting for that for those dollars so if there's no objections i'll turn over to rich and rich you could start talking about what work we're looking to do as part or envisioning as part of this pilot agreement. Yeah, I, I think you said it succinctly and just for the whole team, thank you for everybody uh, to jump on the committee. And, and and I think there'll be more content as each call goes. And as my uh, designer and Jeff Bandini is with uh, uh, there, we'll be doing, uh, someone's having some feedback. Uh, they'd be doing the majority of all of the heavy lifting as far as design. My civil engineer, Larry Silva with Silva Engineering, didn't make it today. But basically, he is going to be part and parcel working with the traffic engineer to help survey the property and deal with all of the uh, required horizontal civil efforts. So we can identify what you said, David, so well. And that's two main items is really the scope. And regardless of the, the once scope's defined or as concurrent to scope design, we craft whatever agreement we have financially to front the money to do the improvements out there. And uh, there's a lot of uh, want to get this road fixed. And th this is a real big step for the town of West Bridgewater. So I think everybody here is gonna have a lot of other people talking in their ear. And uh, I'm looking forward to you guys bringing those uh, you know opinions to the table because we get kind of a one crack at this, uh, so we know exactly what we're going to do and time is of the essence. So we're going to have to do some heavy lifting uh, Bandini and myself my civil to be able to continue to give you visuals and graphics on what we're trying to do now Linda I know you'd sent around uh, Kind of a quick package. I don't know if you're gonna, you know, pull it up online. I can pull it up Okay, sure. and then this is uh, I think a few of you have already presented the total project to Jan I've seen you before and obviously Chris and and uh, Hugh, uh, but for those that haven't, I haven't met the uh, assessor's office or Dylan. So this can be super fast. I'm not gonna, uh, you know, spend a lot of time on my project, but just get to the road improvements. And really that's what this team is gonna do. I'm happy through the process to answer questions on both the project development goals, you know, employment goals, anything else. Um, 
if we have time during our calls or on the sidebar, as everybody who's been dealing with me so far, I'm fully accessible. I give you my cell phone, I give you my emails, and I'm, I'm happy offline to answer any questions that we don't get to in our time. So, you know, we're, we're looking in what I call phase one or just a master plan to build a building that looks similar to this, different colors. But really, we built one down in Elm Street, if you want to go and drive by it, but 350,000 foot Class A Industrial Logistics Center. Um, Linda, you can go to the next page. Um, and you can just kind of scroll, scroll, keep going. I don't want to spend too much time. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Keep going up. There you go. There you go. Go down one. Sorry. Yeah. So this is what was presented at the zoning board. This is what we went through with finance committee. So there's nothing new here, no new content, but just for Dylan and the assessor's office. The goal for this property is to put one, maybe two. Right now we're limited to one for a lot of uh, construction development reasons but two warehouse facilities, industrial under the current zoning that we got approved. And then as we develop the new intersection, we are gonna have some strip of land along 106 in the corner of the new intersect, signalized intersection, which we generically call the retail parcel. So we'll have some form of future retail. We may develop it, we may sell the land and somebody may put something there questions on it but we'd have no clue what the retail is but it is a part as we get into jeff's work of a trip generator of our development and things that terms that some of you may be familiar with that others don't but this is a project we are asking for no variances no wetland we are not doing anything that's not going to be done within the confines of the current zoning and municipal approvals so um one thing that you're going to hear a couple times is this weird phrase mepa um, Jeff can talk about it later if we want to get into it on this first call, but because of our proximity to, to State Highway 24, and we are going to probably have to go, we the developer, go through a MEPA process. All that means is that we're going to have to check the box with the state and all the organizations, which we will, and it's independent from this. But the road improvements and what we're doing will have an impact and effect of how we're actually presenting the project to the state. So. The, the critical path for me is to define this road improvement scope with you, the committee, and also the financeability of it and get it back to this board of selectmen for final vote and then town vote. But this is the project. Any questions we can go through a little later. Um, next slide. So, so what we've done as, at, at DeBartolo is taken on a challenge from a few of people on this call and as well as other people within the community to try to figure out how to A, fix the intersection. Now, as we all know that right now, Lincoln Street kind of comes up north and dead ends at the Honeydew. And uh, we have a very bad traffic problem east-west on you know, 106 or Center Street, as some of you know it. We have secured a purchase and sale agreement with Mr. Dempsey, whose home is in the center of this image. And we control that parcel as the developer. What we did is work with Jeff Bandini's team at McMahon and came up with, is it feasible from a traffic engineering standpoint to align Crescent and a new Lincoln realignment and signalize it to help the flow of traffic and control flow east, west, north, and south? And we're only here today because many moons ago last year, the answer came as yes, I had control enough land and at a high level, there is nothing that is keeping us from having this committee discuss the scope of work here. So we have not finished engineering. We have not thought through everything like sidewalks and pedestrian crossings and you know through traffic. So these are preliminary conceptual ideas that simply state it's possible. It is not meant to be developer telling you this is the only thing I wanna do. It's just really what we're focused on to go to the next step. So the image that you see, and I'm gonna have another image in a minute, is really, can this work? The problem and challenges with any road work, if you've looked at anything going on in your community elsewhere, or wherever else you've been or on the highways in Massachusetts, is we run into a couple basic problems. One is the utility companies. What do the utility companies have in our way? We wanna widen things, wanna move things. How many utility companies we have to deal with? That's gonna be a very big part of our learning curve, which I don't have the answer to, but you could, you'll see that we have power lines and tele, you know, communication lines along the north side of Center Street. We're gonna have to deal with those entities to figure out what they can do and can't do, and then what the town can or can't make them do. 
which as a developer, I probably don't have any control. The other thing that we run into is something as simple as water. How do we drain these things? It does become a big factor because we can't just put a road somewhere and then have Mr. Dempsey's retail facility all of a sudden flood. So we do think about the flow of water. Then we have normal stuff like wetlands, you know, things that we can't mitigate. And lastly, unless I'm missing something, Jeff, we really have to deal with the imminent domain and right of way. What can the town improve and what can't the town improve without doing some sort of legal action? Um, I think everybody along 106 is going to support a thoughtful design with this committee uh, chairing and leading that. But until we get there, we have to see also through surveys who we have to deal with and who we can, you know, from the town's perspective, tell what we're, our improvements are going to be. So that's a kind of quickie. I'm going to go to the next page. I don't think it has too much. Yeah. So this is a timeline. This is my development timeline. It's not it's not chopped down at just road improvements, but basically it shows where we've been in the past. You know, I had these PSAs to purchase land in place by the end of 2019. We're in 2021. So now I'm excited to try to figure out how to get this road constructed and do it to, you know, the benefit of the community. Um, we have gotten rezoning approval in September, and now we are starting the process of figuring out the road because the town was unsuccessful in getting a Mass Works grant uh, in late November. My permitting for my development exclusive of this can happen in approximately two to three months. I'm not saying I'll get through everything with MEPA or not, but I'm kind of a two, three month duration, give or take. The process of getting through committee, getting approvals, if we do successfully get approval from selectmen and then to a town vote will be longer than that duration, most likely, but maybe it'll be close. But the actual permitting, because we're going to be dealing with your town is, and hopefully Jeff can guide us to keep us out of state DOT. This is something that will come up periodically is as a, as a guider of at least time and money, I'm gonna, I'm gonna point out as well as Jeff and maybe Larry when he's on, hey, we wanna steer clear of putting our road into DOT control. And the means is we just get lost in the abyss of all the mass dot stuff. It may be inevitable. I'm not saying that I, I, we can do it, but Jeff's gonna constantly remind us if we start triggering scope and it gets into a purvey that the DOT is doing true review, we, we, we better make that decision openly in this committee. So this timeline is only gonna tell you what we plan to do. And then the development duration of my project on site is about 11 to 12 months road improvements that we're contemplating will be less duration than that weather permitting but we'll just have to see how we do so the next page i believe is just is the, the initial numbers and and everybody especially the assessor office uh these are projections and ideas they're not meant to guide anything but we did get some preliminary numbers on that last image that you saw uh from you know my contractors who were building the project in elm street and Above just construction numbers, which you can see a line item over on the right, that's number seven, hard cost. Hard cost is simply the construction numbers. We think that maybe we're staring at something in the two to two and a half million dollars, but it's going to be whatever it is once we finally determine the scope. And then you're going to hear a phrase every now and then, if you haven't heard, it's called soft cost. It's everything else. It's permitting, it's engineering, it's legal. So all these other things that you see here are primarily all soft cost items. So for, until we get a scope down, I've, I've picked a number. The town went to the state with input from another engineer at about a $4 million all-in budget, if I'm not mistaken, correct, Dave? And so I'm at three and a half. It's, gonna, it's kinda, kinda as we do this thing, my best case is the lower it is and the more we can get, we're all gonna be happy. But I'm gonna kind of always stay on point as are, are we in this two and a half, three and a half, four million range? But for, for lack of a better number, that's where we're starting in the concept. Um, for those of you that knew Elm Street, I know Bill Lucini's business is located on it. The town of uh, Bridgewater's improvements, which was much larger as far as length and miles, as well as a full intersection, sat at about five and a half million dollars, five million dollars. So using their, uh, actual hard bid public works project, I believe we're probably much less than them. So I don't see us encroaching there unless we do something drastically wrong. 
but just giving some people initial numbers of what's gone on in the community or the greater community. Everything else in here, we've pulled off current uh, tax rate. Um, the 2020 tax bill for the parcels that I'm purchasing, this is exclusive of the Dempsey parcel, not to confuse you, this is the Haciotis land where my developer is. And then we've gotten some preliminary input from the town, but none of these numbers are meant to lead or mislead anybody. But right now I know what our taxes are because I pay them through my agreement. And I, I know what we think they're gonna be based on a future assessment. So one thing we're gonna work closely on is guidance from the town assessor's office is how taxation is, how does it generate, and how does it ramp up to an actual finally approved and built an operating center? Because um, that's gonna be the ramp up of taxes catching up to our development. Um, lastly, the, the bottom right corner is just a, a schedule of how we would spend it and then how we uh, initially have thought to pay it back through basically uh, using the generated taxes from the Haciotis parcel uh, and the future retail parcel, just because it's all one parcel right now, to pay me back by not taxing me the higher rate until such time as I've been repatriated the development costs that I've incurred. So on our first phone call with the selectmen, one of the selectmen did say she was not interested in paying interest, just full full uh, disclosure i've already heard one negative comment to it but i'm sure we'll have plenty of discussion that over the course of our committee um i don't think anything else it tells a little bit about my development company on the next slide in case anybody cares um that's the outline um of what we're here to talk about if you can linda i sent you a couple other things and i really oh i'm sorry and there's the location um do you have those other ones in here too yes i do Okay, this is just to show kind of how large a survey we're dealing with. And my surveyors have already done this work. They haven't done the bulk of the survey that Bandini's team needs to really start identifying who's in our way, who controls what, and what type of operating space we have to work with the design on Center Street. But, it, you know, this is really tiny, but when you go in there on Lincoln Street, we actually show by survey where every power pole is and that type of detail is going to be necessary up and down center street a little bit on crescent street and almost all the way to 24 just to start figuring out what can fit uh, and then have to start backing our scope down because we can't do certain things so that's that's really all that's for um this you're going to hear some things and jeff may talk to him today I, with the time i'm really going to turn it back to you guys to ask questions i think today is anybody speak up about things that are really confusing or things that you'd like elaborated on so we can be better prepared on our next call but you're going to hear this thing about trip generation so i want to separate for the committee two kind of thoughts because they are truly separate one is whatever my development is creating okay and this is any project in any municipality in Massachusetts. I have to deliver these type of charts. And these are charts that are set by baselines. You can get into questions to Jeff. But my project generates X amount of trips, okay? And if you look in weekdays in, weekdays out total, you'll see these numbers in here. But for round numbers in and out, we're generating just under 2,000, about 1,800 trips on a daily basis. We also have, in the big old traffic study I sent, which I, we aren't going to go through today, how the current intersection operates. And if anybody wants to make a guess, they do ratings A to F. And our intersection right now, which is not signalized in cattywampus around the uh, honeydew, is an F. You know, And I think at the best, you might have a D minus, kind of like my uh, some of my grades in college. But basically, what we have right now is a complete cluster and it needs to be fixed if my project never gets built. And I want to just say that to those that are looking against it, because the meeting and the committee is not about approving my project. It's making sure we understand what my project is or isn't doing to the current traffic problems and how my purchase of the Dempsey property and realignment is really going to take a really, really bad problem today and exponentially make it better just by putting in a signal. I think Jeff was asked this question in the rezoning hearing, and it's almost, you can't calculate how much better it's gonna be once you can have a signal that can operate PM and AM flows. So it's just 
by putting in an aligned signal intersection, this whole project, this whole problem with getting in and out, much less getting off of Lincoln Street, is going to go from an F to an awesome in a matter of days. So, but you're going to hear this phrase trip generation. And if there's a lot of discussion on it later or not, Jeff's the man. Um, what's the next one? Okay. There's the big traffic study. I think you should take it home tonight, put it bedside, drink some coffee and enjoy it. But it is mind numbing and detailed. But what you're gonna see in it, if anybody wants to study it, is that the current traffic problem is atrocious. And I don't, you know, that's my abridged executive summary. Um, you don't have to go through the whole traffic summary. I'm sorry. I, you can go to the bottom. You gotta get to that last visual. All I wanted to get to was kind of what I call the full Monty. Um, see all this stuff? Look at that. It's like Greek. Keep going. No, keep going. Go all the way to the picture. Jeff loves this stuff. I mean, he sits around and reads this every day. There we go. Um, so I use a phrase because I don't know. It just keeps me. The picture that you saw at the beginning of our slide presentation is really the focus on the intersection. It's focusing on and you can see the overlay. Lauren, I don't know if you can zoom in a little or out, but not a lot, but if you just come in a little to where the intersection is there. Um, I don't think I can. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So the other picture really drills into just to see if we could come up at a high level and realign Lincoln to Crescent. This is really a test that we asked McMahon to say, if you could lay out the full Monty and you didn't know where the utilities were and you don't know who owns what and you don't know how to drain it and you don't know what the state may or may not have to say, what do you think we can do? And so I think really we have a discussion over the next few meetings is what's our minimum project that we wanna see? And then I think both cost and constraints of a lot of things are gonna keep us from doing the full Monty. But I, I want to use this image and talk about it over time in that we can't do much more than what you see here. And so, you know, we're not building overpasses. We're not building tunnels. We're not doing crazy things like bridges for pedestrians. Um, but at the end of the day, this image, as you drill down into it, and hopefully everybody will get a copy of it that you can zoom in on, you can start seeing these lines where we put in different things like sidewalks and, and what have you. A couple things. Number one, on the north side, which this is flipped around, but on the north side of 106, one of the main constraints that the, the keeping us from widening is a cemetery. And I, nobody in the committee, I believe, wants to exhume bodies to do a road improvement. And so we have kept short moving into the cemetery, which is kind of on, this, on the bottom right side of this road. And it's too big, too far away to see. But that's kind of one of our constraints. Another constraint is simply the on-ramp and off-ramp of 24. We don't want to get into DOT and we don't want to do anything that works within their right-of-way because then that triggers maybe years of conversation with them. So those are the two main constraints. I would say coming back the other way, there are some wetlands on the other side of Mr. Dempsey's property that do have some constraint to the full Monty, as I call it. But if I had to guide this group, I would start from the intersection, what we wanted to do, and then we just keep going as far as we can to put as much infrastructure in for today, and then maybe a future improvement plan if and when the town either has funds for it and or has control of some of the lands to deal with DOT, to deal with mitigation. So some of this is kind of like putting a conduit in a wall and putting a string in it and later on we'll buy the sound system if you've renovated your house so those are kind of the big things i'm gonna kind of shut up now and you know see if i just completely droned half of you out all right so rich thank you very much for the overview um i was remiss i want to go over just a couple of quick things and then i'm going to ask people to, if they have any questions one is what is the mission of this group and what is the mission of this committee we are not here, nor are we empowered or authorized. We are in favor of the project or we are not in favor of the project. That is not the purpose of this committee. This committee 
is to enter into an agreement or attempt to enter into an agreement on be, um, to advise to the Board of Selectmen to enter into an agreement. Are in agreement with what he is going to build and how much it's going to cost us and we're going to reimburse him through the process. Identify what uh, is going to be built, what the money is, and what the um, and then what is going to cost the town through the reimbursement process. If you're in favor of this or you're against it, it doesn't matter. Quite frankly, I really, unless there's a minimal question, I really don't even want to entertain a lot about the traffic study. Date either through the planning board or through somebody else. Our purpose is to identify what will be built, what the numbers will be, and then we're going to put that into a form, a pilot agreement. The Board of Selectmen then have to make a decision whether they want to agree to it. If they agree to it, they then place it at town meeting in May and town meeting must approve it. If the Board of Selectmen decide not to approve it, they have one of two options. They could say, we're against it. We're not going to do it at all. And the process dies. Or they can send it back to us and they could say, we like this conceptually, but we want you to fine tune your numbers here or change this or change that. And then we would re-engage with Mr. Hartline as the developer. That is our role. We cannot have final say or approval. Only town meeting has final say and approval. And it only gets there if the Board of Selectmen allow it to get there through the approval process. All right. With that said, I'm sorry, I should have said that up front. Did anybody have any questions at all for Rich for what he has discussed so far? Oh, I'm not that good. Okay. All right. Well, I think what's fortunate is, is that you have a group here that's pretty well educated on the affairs of the town. And as you said, this has already been before the board multiple times. It's been before FinCom. It's been before town meeting. So everybody here has seen these presentations. So I think we're okay. fortunate. We're not starting from scratch. So with that said, I really think, um, Linda, can you go to the picture, the overall picture? I didn't see what number it was. I want to say it was like probably page 9 or 10 or 11. And it was from Google Maps, and it showed the the, um, the aerial view of the area. This one? I know, we can't see it yet. Yeah, but it's got to come up on our screen. You see it? Yep. We do not see it. Did you hear a presentation? Um, Just go back to present the document and then we'll scroll. We can't see you scrolling. We can't see it scrolling. No, We're not no we can't. It. We just can't um, see each other right now. Everybody's tiled. There's no image. And by the way, I've only been on two that work perfectly in a, almost a year now. There's always some. They never work perfectly. Oh, I, I had to. It's like, yeah, yeah, now we can see it. Thank you. Uh, so it was. It's right after the initial package of from Rich is is um is done, and then keep on going. Yeah, keep going. It, one it's more. right past the next one. There yes. you go. So, if if it's okay with everybody, what I really want to do is I want to focus on this picture because I think this should be the original discussion with Rich. Um, I, I wish I had a telestrator and I don't. But you can see there's the large parcel where it says Lincoln Street. That open area is the area that he's looking to develop. And again, in case there's any confusion from anyone listening to this or that's on the committee, the reimbursement process that we're looking at is not specific to his development. That's on his own. That's a traditional development that he has to do on his own. We're only talking about the road improvements. Um, he would front the money and then through the pilot, the town reimburse him. So that's going to be the subject of negotiations. 
understand the layout. One, where it says Lincoln Street it encompasses about 74 acres. You can see the little wooded area that is to the right of Lincoln Street. There's already an existing residential home that is there, and he would be developing around that. Uh, Lincoln obviously exists the way it does. And to the left of the icon on Lincoln Street, but across the road, there is that open period uh, space as well. That is what the town just recently purchased of the old Russo complex of the greenhouse. That's where we would put our new athletic fields. And then as you continue to travel southbound on Lincoln Street, side of Scotland, and then to the left is Pleasant. Uh, South Elm, I'm sorry. Um, and then obviously you have Route 106 on the other side. So you can see how Lincoln Street comes out to Route 106, and then there's a gap and there's a road across the street and that's Crescent. There are some trees in between there and that I presume is the Dempsey property that Hart, Mr. Hartline has, a, um, has an option on to purchase. So we would then swap that land with the town in the new and Lincoln Street would then line up with Crescent and that's where the intersection of lights would go. Does that have, anybody have any questions about what we just went over? I just wanna make sure everybody understands the area that we're discussing. All right. I think that we have to focus on is what do we want? Rich is going to fund the money, We're going to have to reimburse him. Um, and so his project is going to call for uh, widening Route 106 to the Route 24 interchange a little bit past Crescent Street. Um, uh, getting close down to West Street. Um, and then there's gonna be some sidewalks on 106 and some sidewalks on Lincoln Street. Um, I've had conversations with other members of the committee. Sidewalks are going to be pretty important to the town. Quite frankly, without as much sidewalk as we can get, I don't see um, town approving it at town meeting. Um, and so I would like to throw it out there to see what else anybody is looking at in reference to conceptually how they want to see this project get developed. So, what, what you want to talk? No, I mean, so, I, I, everything, I, I can only say everything that we've seen and we have gone through to get ready for uh, the town meeting, and we've all spent a lot of time on this, some of us that were on that committee. I think that's the perfect deal right there. I think that's what we need to do. Um, and, and, and we've all looked at it. Um, I know some people here probably haven't seen it. I don't, I don't know. So can, can everybody hear Bill? Yeah. You said that that's the perfect deal. I'm gonna turn this over to you. Can you just explain what, that, what you mean by the perfect deal? I love it. Hey, hey. Linda, can you go back just for the interest again? I think it's always good when people are looking at something just instead of ourselves. Can you go back in the presentation and just put the blow up intersection um, while uh, while uh, Bill is talking? Uh, yeah. Well, why, why I'm saying that I think it's a perfect deal because we all worked hard on on Rich's team. So, Rich, um, just tell me which one. That one. Next one. This one. That one. Thank you. I'm going to blow it up. If you can. Um, Go ahead, Bill. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Richard. That's good. That's good. We talked about it. We spent in, 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 in spent countless hours on it, coming up with the right way to do it. Okay. And I believe what came out of this is, is, is perfect. In my opinion, this would alleviate a lot of problems. Okay. And I think a lot of that work has already been done, correct, Rich? Into coming up with this scheme? I mean. Well, the concept is, yes. I mean, like the picture on the screen, it's just right. now implementing it and identifying the final scope that the town wants is my goal, as well as the finance. Correct. So what would we want to do different, David? You're asking me that, you know, I mean. Well, I want to make sure, for example, on um, when we at this intersection, obviously we, we know what we're doing. As we travel down to Route 24, actual plan which have both sides for Route 106. No, it does not. No, and let's. And no, it, yeah, and I think let's. That, that's where we need to talk about the 
kind of building the intersection and then going out. And I know where you're going. I think I think I know where you're going, David, on the general question. So some of the people may not want to speak freely because I think it's it's getting all ideas out on uh, as far as conceptually things that the committee speaking for other residents or just yourselves would like to see happen. We won't sit today's call and say no, we won't be able to do that. But we want to make sure we grasp the largest vision of this committee as well as focus on the intersection at the, at a minimal so I'll, I'll answer something and and you don't have to follow with each image but i have this intersection that jeff's group did and then i have that last image on the slide which is a which is what i called the full monty the movements and the amount of lanes in each direction are different between the full monty and this one Okay, so I want to draw that distinction. The need or want to, and you mentioned sidewalks, to have sidewalks on the north side, which presently there is a very bad sidewalk on the north side running in front of the, the honeydew and everything out to the crosswalk at 24. There is not sidewalk on the south side. The, one of the things I hate is building a sidewalk to nowhere. I've already committed to say I would build a sidewalk on our property side on Lincoln Street in the public uh, things, and I am going to do that. But, and I'm, I, I'm just throwing this out so you guys kind of get into creative thinking. If I was having a sidewalk on the west side of Lincoln coming up to this new intersection, and then I had it turn west going to 24, it would if I needed that five feet or four feet of sidewalk, whatever Jeff tells us we have to have by code, I would not build the sidewalk along the south side towards the shell station simply because we may need that five feet to build another, you know, through lane. And that through lane might be worth more to this committee than having sidewalks on the north and south side of 106. Now, when we get to the east side of Lincoln going towards Market Basket, we may want to start in ability on the north and south side of, of Center Street and take it to as far as either our budget can take us or constraints with wetlands can take us and then allow somebody else to pick that up. So sometimes, and we've all been there, you walk down a sidewalk, it just stops, right? Um, right now, you cannot cross the bridge on the south side of 24 six so i wouldn't build a sidewalk all the way down to route 24 because it's i mean we're not picking up any pedestrian traffic and i'm not imagining somebody coming to the shell station wanting to get out of their car and walk all the way down to the new sports complex so these are decisions that the team will make but i think we want to throw everything on the list call it a wish list and, and and I'll throw one out that I think we'd be crazy to do, but I just, you know, I don't want to tell you, I wouldn't put bike lanes on the north and south side of 106. I wouldn't start eating up valuable real estate. So the one cyclist who's crazy enough to go towards 24 is, but you guys might want to have a smart street. I know there's a gentleman on this that knows streets in your town better than I do. I, I don't want to put street trees down the middle of it and street canopy trees. These are things that take up precious real estate but the committee can tell us what they want and then we can try to program it. We are gonna be touching Crescent. We are gonna to be touching 106 in Lincoln. And as Dave said, we might even ink down towards that other street, which I, escapes me now to the east on the north side of 106. So uh, I think we wanna know what other bells and whistles or if there's a kind of wish list that we're trying to fit into to the right of way. So does do the sidewalks? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, no, Go ahead. Um, do the sidewalks extend from 106 all the way to where we're contemplating the sports complex on Lincoln no, Street? No, the, Lincoln Street has no sidewalks. Am I correct, everyone? There's no sidewalk. I'm correct. No, I, I'm sorry. I meant your plan. Does it include adding them there? Property that I control, I, I've committed and I showed on last presentation after the finance committee meetings, to sh I show a sidewalk even in places that I don't legally have the right to run it, but I do show it on the west side to my property. I don't run sidewalks on the east side of Lincoln on other people's property. So uh, that is a dollar amount, okay. whatever the dollars are, that is not part of this package, even if we have to draw it in. Okay. So there'll be desegregation of cost in the future. But there is okay. no... 
So the sidewalk that I committed to do, if I bring it up to the new intersection and I turn towards 24 and kind of goes towards the Shell Station, there's no sidewalk right now along the south side of 106 Center Street. There's no sidewalk there. So the pedestrians that I'm anticipating picking up on the sidewalk I committed, if we decide to do that, I can spend that money elsewhere. Then I would have them cross through the signalized intersection to the, the Crescent side or Market Path or Honeydew side. Rick, okay. I have a question. Um, just Yes. The full Monty takes us all the way to the exit ramp, correct? The Bye. full Monty, the, the contem Jeff's team contemplated what they believe to be the a developable land area, you know, just short of the cemetery, that you can put a a two-way, two lane in each direction, which neck on both sides of this improvement. You see here, as you see it, if and then it comes open and then it opens to three lanes. Turn going onto Crescent, a straight through, and then a right turn going on. If we want, and we can zoom in on the last slide, we can blow up and I can show you the best case. And again, it's without any survey and it's without any knowledge of the town's control of the road. But if you want, if you can speed to the last slide, I'll show you the difference. Does everybody see those three arrows, right? It's pretty easy, a left, a right, and a straight through. Um, whoop, there it was. Can you zoom in a little on this? A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. All right, this is looking good. Now try to, there we go. So this one allows, Bandini, you haven't spoken enough, I'll let you talk. This one allows two lanes in each direction through the intersection, is that correct? Yeah, Rich, thanks a lot, and thanks for having me. So, yeah, so the distinction between this one and the one that was focused on the screen previously is just the di the difference between that full Monty. This one providing that four-lane cross-section, two lanes in each direction, whereas the other one just provided that taper out at the intersection. Um, the other thing that this does is show the pedestrian accommodations that Rich alluded to. Um, the other concepts include the pedestrian accommodations, so we certainly want to be sensitive to the needs of the town in terms of providing those sidewalks. But, you know, again, I'll, I'll echo what Rich has mentioned a few times now is that the right of way for the Mass DOT land is just east of where the ramps are if you were to pan over just to the side. Our objective is to meet that right of way where the the DOT um, property line kind of meets so that we're not getting into the point where we're redesigning ramps and reconfiguring um, geometry with respect to that. We want to stay, you know, between the mass DOT right of way and this intersection because that's what we can control. And as Rich mentioned again, you know, we're certainly constrained by the utilities in the right of way as well. So, you know, achieve what this is and and you know it's our goal and our aim at this point um to provide that survey and then take that design and see what you know what we can fit in there with in working within those constraints so i think that uh, halloween all the way to the exit ramp isn't going to happen because you run into the dot I believe the line, and we haven't determined this, but just from our from the property records that we were able to research when we put together this concept, and you might even be able to see it if you scroll over a little bit. I think there's a little bit of a dash line that shows exactly where that is. It's just west of the Shell Station and just before where the um, entrance and exit ramps are to. Right. Or pan out. Yeah, a little, a little, a little nope, other way. Other way. Other way. Yeah, so that yeah, there it is. That vertical, that vertical black line that you can see. I don't know if it's dashed or not. I got it. That would be the 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 meat existing line that we would aim. Such that we stay out of the T design process. Because as Rich mentioned, you know, once we get into the lane going right into the yeah, exactly. Once once we get into the, the purview of going into DOT project. The review process just becomes that much more extensive and you know, limiting in terms of our timeline. So you have a car and you took you right into the ramp. You, you, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. But so, so Jeff, 
at the worst cases where I'm looking at that black vertical line, vertical line, there is two lanes in each direction. If we pick it up from there, we have enough real estate to continue with double lane down towards the intersection without running into any mass DOT of authorization requirements. Yeah, I mean, as yeah. you can see, just east of that, where that yeah. vertical line is, it's a four lane cross section. Exactly. So hey, we would. Dave, can you can you mute Dave? I think you're getting feedback. of that vertical line so that's that's the property line between the town and mass dot so we would aim to continue that four lane cross section east of that line i want to say east because this is this is inverted right. but you know right of that line we would aim to continue that four lane cross section all the way to the intersection yeah that's that's kind of the full monty that's not what we showed in our conceptual design that kind of had it taped out but no again it's a goal to try to you know maintain this because you know it provides certainly an, an added level of capacity and so-called user friendliness to maintain that four lane coming from, you know, coming from Mansfield to carry that all the way through this intersection. We think, you know, certainly, you know, more lanes equals more capacity. So we, you know, the amount of vehicles at the intersection will be able to process just increases with that ability to, to keep exponentially. Yeah. Yeah. So no, essentially it really is because, you know, a lot of times when you talk about, you know, merging and diverging, you know, there's, you know, issues with capacity and, and, and some safety concerns with that too. So we just want to make sure that, you know, if we have, have the ability to, to maintain that four lane cross section to do that. So in the interest, sorry, in the interest of hitting our one hour max, I just want to say a few things and, and set expectations. And this is a great image to, kill, uh, to, to end on too. Very simply put, it's a we're going to find out through survey and design that that Jeff and my civil are going to do what's the path of least resistance and then what could be harder to deal with but maybe still achievable and then what we just flat can't overcome like the cemetery um but this image does show kind of some sidewalks running to nowhere right this kind of just gives you the visual where if we ran the sidewalks on the shell station side all the way to the you know it's just going to nowhere um so every inch and every foot as we go through the survey the committee is going to get updated and see where we have our pinch points or whatever but tying into what bill started with this if we could achieve this walks on both sides and two lanes through the intersection and and sidewalks on the other side of lincoln going down the sports complex it, it, it's it's a whole new world and i really do think this is the best case for monty unless there's something else we're missing as we get through our committee um a there's going to be a little bit of a slow of new information coming so for next week's call and maybe subsequent jeff can only produce information based on the surveys that are done we have our surveyors scheduled to go out there next week you know it's a little bit of snow and access and and moving around you know with safety uh driven but we will be updating the committee and there may be a meeting maybe two right off the bat that we don't have anything new but maybe over a week of thinking about it and questions we might be able to get deeper in a discussion uh with any questions that you may have but i don't have anything else to add dave i'll just get on mute and listen to you all right thank you rich so again um you're right in the interest of time i want to try to wrap this up in a couple of minutes dylan i saw that you unmuted yourself is there something you would like to add or, or question I had a question uh, for you, Dave. I applied for the MassWorks grant in 2020. I was curious if in 2021, and if we are granted it, what that will do to the pilot. At that point, I don't know if construction would have already been started or if we we're able to use that to reimbursement the hard line. Yeah. Um, I've already talked to the engineer and if there is going to be another round, we are certainly going to apply again. Um, however, we need, in order to qualify and get the most points, we need this project to be part of that. So if we're going to go forward on the pilot and it gets approved at the Maytown meeting, then I don't see us going forward on the Mass Works Grant. Maybe that will change at that point, um, but you know, we can always talk about it. We can make whatever adjustments we need to make, um, but, that mass works grant, if it comes out in, in 
is awarded again is not until the fall of 2021. So it's a whole nother year down the road. My guess is, is that Rich is going to say he's got his hand up, but my guess is he's going to say that he doesn't have a lot of interest in waiting nine months on an if. So if we go to town meeting and town meeting approve this, I'm sure he's going to want to put the gas down, hit the accelerator and go forward on this. And say no, when town meeting says no, then I am still committed to reapplying for the Mass Works grant which is still interested nine months from now, we should take that as an opportunity. He may or may not be interested. He'll only know that, and my guess is he doesn't even know that today. But if I said that wrong, um, no, jump. you're fine. No, you're fine. Okay. I thought it was an extremely great question. And, and, and think about this as we all get more knowledgeable in our scope. If we have to make some decisions because of not just time, say utility companies in our way, or the town needs to have more time to take some right of way. What, what I see happening, and this would be maybe the double best case scenario, would be we agree on the scope of work that I am to execute on. And then we identify future improvements, a longer term improvement plan for the town of West Bridgewater bifurcate those two scopes, allowing us to move forward uh, through selectmen and town approval with a development goal and do the work on the road. And then the town apply for that extra or that next level of improvements, which is most likely gonna be a much smaller request. I could see both happening if, if quite honestly, if we got to a constraint time, scope, right of way or dollar, I could see the town going for a supplemental improvement package, which would exclude whatever I'm moving forward on. And, and I think that's very plausible if we get to certain places uh, in this thing where we all agree we want to get this intersection done because Mr. Dempsey's not going to stand around forever. And uh, I do have to pay for that purchase at some point. Um, but I think, it, I think it could be at both. But I know if I start work, I can't get state funds funneled to me the state doesn't hand out checks and they won't give it to me. That's the only thing I wanted to clarify. So the second thing to that is I think we, let's let's figure out right now we would reschedule this for 330 uh, Wednesday next week. However, um, Rich, this is what I'm thinking this is what I would ask you to do. Um, and if the committee feels otherwise, please let me know. I my primary motivation Route 106 is to have two lanes from the Route 24 cutoff as far down as we can get it to Market Basket. But on the Mass Works Grant, it was to West Street. We can't have sidewalks on both sides. I would rather have sidewalks on one side. Not sure I care about which side. Again, the committee can weigh in on that. Sidewalks on one side and two lanes sidewalks on both sides and only on one lane. I agree. Okay. I agree with that, David. I would say though, if we had our preference, the sidewalks on the side, I don't know, left, right, north, south here, where the shell station is might be preferable. Just thinking if, again, from the sports complex or from that to the shell station might be might be nice for people to be able to walk that way but i agree one side or the other is better than and having two travel lanes each way is probably a better option then going down i agree with you and then on lincoln street is that we want sidewalks personally you know rich um, i know you say that you can only control the area that you control but the town controls the layout on both sides of that road um, there shouldn't have to be any takings involved to add a sidewalk. If there is, we'll cross that bridge at that point. Sidewalk at a minimum all the way down to the Russo complex. Because it, again, it doesn't matter to me what side it's on. Personally, I think it would be better on the opposite side of your road because people are not going to be walking a sidewalk. I agree. The city. They'll be walking it along the other side, which includes residential homes and also includes a sports complex. But again, I don't want to speak for the committee. And again, because 432, I'm talking fast. But my question to you, Rich, is that knowing if that's the flavor of the committee at this point, can we have any new information 
ballpark for costs or what could it could not be done based on that information in a week if so we can meet if we don't unless there's a reason to i don't want to meet just to meet so i'm looking to see what we would accomplish in a week from now well and and that's a fair question so i'm going to i'm going to put my uh, engineer on that we could start blowing up the areas and letting people kind of get granular and see what's going on survey information in for jeff and his team to truly produce something that he can stand behind and rep and warrant and at least show where we see some trouble spots to that larger full monty scope um i'm somebody that again i have a zillion meetings just like you guys do i'm happy to hold the meeting seconds 30 seconds if somebody has again i'm just picking on anybody if chris had some questions or if we wanted to chit chat a little about you know assessments or something i i'm happy to make myself available for next week and i think we should hold it and then have a really short one if there's nothing more to talk about nobody wants to really get into you know you know the, the mechanics of financing or, or assessment uh but uh likelihood we won't have anything like you see on the screen where it's truly nailed down um, on a survey all right let's do this then because again i want to be respectful of everybody's time and i want to um, um stop the meeting at this point can you and i agree to talk on monday yes if there's new information on monday then i will call a meeting for the following wednesday and communicate out under the open meal i have to have do 40 hours in advance so that's why Monday would work. Rich and I, you and I talk. There's enough information to com uh, communicate to the committee. Let's call a meeting and we'll communicate it. If there isn't, then again, we'll forward out everything to the committee and we'll shoot for the following Wednesday because my guess is two weeks from now, you might be in a better place than you are in one week. 100%. Yes. Is that sir. fair enough? All right, does, Absolutely. Anybody, does anybody in the committee have any objections to that plan? No? All right, good. All right, so with that said, I thank everybody for being on. Um, and I know we're going fast through everything right now, but we're again, I want to keep it down to one hour. So we will be in touch on Monday as to whether or not we meet on Wednesday. If we meet on Wednesday, same time, same place, 3.30, do it through Google Meets, um, and, um, and I'll see everybody then. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Great. everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.